amigos! Bienvenidos to one of the most charming towns in all of Mexico. The one and only San Miguel de Allende. You've probably heard a lot about this town since it's one of the favorite tourist and retiring destinations for people from all over the world. And today, we want to show you why. I'm pretty sure you've heard what a lovely little town this is with its beautiful streets and alleyways filled with art galleries, amazing rooftops, how its old world charm and great weather make it perfect for a peaceful and relaxed way of living. The way people from different parts of the world with different cultures just come together to this particular place. I know San Miguel is an incredible place. That is why I want to go deeper and not only tell you what you've already heard, but walk you through some of the top details you need to know in case you're considering San Miguel de Allende to be your new home. So come with me and let me show you why everyone falls in love with this town. I'm pretty sure that by the end of this video, you will too. San Miguel is located in the central part of Mexico, on the west side of the state of Guanajuato. The region where the city lies is known as El Bajío. It's a high altitude dry area that enjoys a really nice weather all year round. Its foundation dates back to 1542, when priest Juan de San Miguel established the village of San Miguel el Grande, which eventually grew to become one of the main waypoints in the mining trade between Zacatecas and Mexico City. In this place, Ignacio Allende was born, a key figure during the early stages of the Mexican Independence War. In March of 1826, as an independent country, the Mexican government would grant the town of San Miguel el Grande the title of city and changed its name to San Miguel de Allende in honor of the city's hero. In 1938, a Peruvian artist named Felipe Cosio del Pomar founded the University School of Fine Arts which is now known as the famous Instituto Allende, which is an event that would define the identity of San Miguel since its culture is linked real tied to the arts in its development. Somewhere in the late 1940s in the post-war era, a lot of war veterans that were interested in studying arts or developing their creativity started to look into a little known town in central Mexico called San Miguel de Allende since its fame as a haven for artists started to grow. And as a result, there was a boom in immigration and in economic growth, since most of these students decided to stay in town and then the expat community of San Miguel de Allende, which is established today, has grown significantly. Today, San Miguel is arguably the biggest and most solid expat community in Mexico, maybe right next to Lake Chapala, but certainly on the same level. And it has evolved from being made up of mostly Americans to being really international in a cosmopolitan community, with the arrival of people from Europe, Asia, and South America. So now you know about this town that turned into paradise for artists of all ages and retirees. This also means that you won't have a hard time communicating here, since English is almost an unofficial second language in the city. And the cultural transition could be a lot smoother for you, since the gathering of international artists make the place a multicultural space while keeping in touch with its Mexican roots. But let's dig deeper and talk about the details of how life in San Miguel de Allende is and how much it costs to live here. First, let's check a few neighborhoods that I'm sure you're really gonna like. Let's start with downtown San Miguel, known as El Centro. You will find that most activities and commerce are concentrated in El Centro, but you can also find streets and neighborhoods dedicated only to houses or residential. It goes without saying that this centro is emblematic and one of the most beautiful historic centers in all of Mexico. Here, you can find everything you'll need or want. You have markets, art galleries, restaurants, rooftop bars, street foods, cafes, and the list goes on. It's a great place to live, and depending on which part of Centro you decide to live in, you can find different prices and different amenities. As always in life, there are pros and cons. Being a really busy area, you might find some places or neighborhoods that are somewhat noisy, but as I said, it depends on which part of the street you're looking at and also what kind of lifestyle is the best fit for you. But remember, here you have everything at hand. I mean, literally, a matter of coming out of your house, walking a few steps or blocks, maybe, and you'll find everything you need. So most likely, your list of pros will be longer than your list of cons. Now, the real question is, how much does it cost to live here? 
Well, you can find a diverse range of prices, but being one of the most trendy and desirable places to live in San Miguel, you can expect really high prices. For instance, you can find rentals from 20,000 pesos, which would be approximately 1,000 US dollars, up to 100,000 pesos, which is about 5,000 US dollars. It's a big range. So it really depends on which area you're looking into, if you're coming alone or if you have a family, what kind of amenities you're looking for, and all of that matters. Take into consideration that this area is historical and the government works really hard to maintain the colonial charm of its downtown. Here, the houses are on the side of the street and most of them date back centuries. So remodeling is very limited for not saying prohibited. But if Centro is completely out of your budget, then let's look into another neighborhood or colonia called Las Brisas. This part of the city is relatively newer, so here you won't find those historical buildings that you will in Centro, but rather contemporary townhomes with two or three bedrooms, sometimes in gated communities. Now, when I said a bit further, I didn't mean that it was far away from all the action. In this colonia, you'll actually only be a 15 minute drive from Centro or downtown. And that is if you need to go downtown, since you can find pretty much everything that you would need for your day-to-day -day routine there are grocery shops, butcher shops, cafes. It's near some shopping malls as well as big box supermarkets. This part of the city would be perfect if you're looking for a quieter experience, but you still wanna be close to the main town or because you wanna get more space for your money. Since rental prices here start at about 13,000 pesos, which is around $650 a month and up to 20,000 pesos. And last but not least, there's a neighborhood called Guadalupe. This one is located just a bit north of Centro, near the famous factory La Aurora, which I'll get into a little bit later. In this neighborhood, we have once again houses on the side of the street, and here you can find some very old houses from the post-independence area to some really newer buildings hosting apartments for newcomers. Thanks to its proximity to downtown, which is about a nice 20-minute walk, you still have a lot of options for groceries, leisure, and everything that you could want, since it's vicinity of the main roads called Calzada de la Aurora, where you can find a series of cafes, restaurants, in all types of budgets. You find art galleries and handcrafted items, souvenir shops, and it has a lot of charm. I love this neighborhood. Now, one of your pros of this neighborhood would be that you still have the looks and charm of the old world without the noise of downtown. However, the prices go up a bit in comparison to Las Brisas. Your price range in this area would start at 20,000 pesos for an apartment and it can go up to 40,000 pesos for a bigger home. That's anywhere between 1,000 to 2,000 US dollars a month. As you can see, despite being a small city, there's a great variety of options for you to choose from. It all comes down to what is the best fit for you. At the end of the day, it makes no difference which area you choose since you will have everything nearby and most likely you won't even need a car here. And as you can see, the price range is really wide and pretty much the same for any part of the city you choose. Now, this being a city in which a great part of its identity is related to foreigners coming and going, you can expect an easy but thorough process to run a house here. Most likely, there will be a series of documents that you'll need to gather in order to become the newest resident of San Miguel. It should not be more than filing out some forms, proof of identity, as well as a steady income, and obviously signing a lease. So what can you actually expect to pay for utilities in San Miguel? Well, let's start with water. The state of Guanajuato has plenty of water between rivers and a series of dams scattered all across the strait. It's really rare that there would be any shortages of water here. San Miguel de Allende alone counts several dams inside the municipality like Presa Allende or Allende's Dam, which is also a lake that you can go and visit and enjoy. You get a bill every month from Zapasma, which is a local commission of water. And you can expect your bill to be about 300 pesos a month or 15 US dollars. Now, if you've been following my videos, then you already know that electricity in Mexico is provided by, you guessed it, the CFE, which is a federal commission of electricity. The CFE also subsidizes the cost of the service, so it's more affordable for Mexican households. In San Miguel, you get a bill every two months, and in this city, you can expect to pay around 500 to 800 pesos a month, depending on the size of your home, how many people live in your house, and things like that. And remember, if you're in central Mexico, the chances are 
You won't need any air conditioning or heating. It's really up to you if you do have one of these, then the numbers in your bill will obviously increase. Now what about gas? Well, you can find several options to get your gas in San Miguel, but the one that seems to be the most common here is Gas Nieto. They are the biggest providers in the state of Guanajuato. Here, what ends up happening is that you have to have a gas tank in your house, usually called a cilindro because of its tall cylindrical form, normally with a 30 liter capacity. When it empties, then you call the company and they send someone to switch your cilindro with a new one. Your other option is getting a stationary gas tank and instead of switching, they would refill it. In any case, be aware and mindful of your consumption because you can run out of gas without previous notice. The cost for switching your 30 liter cilindro or tank goes for about 800 pesos and one of these cilindros should be enough for a two month period. So breaking it down, you can expect to pay about 20 US dollars a month for gas. Now renting in San Miguel will probably be your biggest expense. When it comes to utilities, prices are very reasonable and pretty much within standards in Mexico. And remember that yes, there are some places with very high rent prices, but you can certainly find places that are not 20,000 or 30,000 pesos. You can certainly find places that are in the 16,000, 17,000 peso range. But don't go anywhere, we still have a lot to cover like grocery, shopping, entertainment, and some tips and recommendations for your day-to-day -day life when you decide to make San Miguel your new home. Now real quick before we continue, I know that researching and moving to Mexico isn't the super easiest task. And you may be wondering if living in Mexico is right for you to begin with. That's why I created a free living in Mexico email series. It gives you some of my top tips on the cost of living, residency visa, retiree benefits and visa options, healthcare and health insurance, best places to live, banking in Mexico, even the 13 reasons why Mexico might not be for you. The link is in the comments of this video. Okay, let's get back to the video now. Now let's get into one of the things that you'll probably do on a regular basis, and that is shopping. From your food, personal care, and even for some treats. Let's start with your basics, like fruits, vegetables, meat, dairy, personal care, and household goods. If you live in Centro or near Centro, you're gonna be able to find a great number of small grocery shops that these would be enough to get a few quick things like fruits, canned food, toothpaste, you know, that sort of thing. When you need to really replenish your pantry, you can either visit one of the two main markets in town. You have Mercado de San Juan de Dios and Mercado Ignacio Ramirez. Both of them are very near Centro, and they offer the pretty much the same thing in both of them. In these markets, you can find everything like fruits, vegetables, dairy products, seeds, I mean, you name it, spices, anything that you could possibly need. You also have several butcher shops and some clothing goods. There's also a restaurant area where you can find small shops selling all kinds of traditional Mexican food. In Mexico, we call these fondas. And you can eat here a full meal for about 100 pesos, which is usually around $5, depending on the exchange rate. Now, since most of these products come from local producers, you can expect lower prices here, and you can be certain that you will find virtually anything that you need. But in case you do have very specific dietary needs, or you need a specific ingredient, there are some big supermarkets in the outskirts of the central area. You can find La Comer, which is a nice supermarket with everything you'll need and more. And then there's my personal favorite, City Market, which is a branch of La Comer, somehow with a different concept, and it offers a lot of imported products. It is more expensive, but it's a very nice grocery store. Now, what about treating yourself? Well, San Miguel has your back, since one of the main attractions for tourists is that it offers a great shopping experience. You can find big malls in the area, and honestly, in San Miguel, who wants to go there? It's no secret that San Miguel is home to a great number of designers and artists, so if you're looking for something beautiful and unique, you should walk around downtown and let its art gallery seduce you. You'll find a great number of art galleries, designer showrooms, handcrafted items, boutiques, and so much more. Connected to Ignacio Ramirez Market, you have the Mercado de Artesanías, which is a large corridor. It goes for about five blocks across downtown, and here you'll find a great number of handcrafted items, either from locals or from different parts of Mexico. You can get lost here for a while. And remember that I mentioned an old building called Fabrica de la Aurora? 
Well, the word fabrica means factory, and as the name suggests, this used to be an old factory dedicated to the production of textiles during the 20th century. In 1990, it shut its doors down, and in 2004, it opened them again. Only now is an art and design center. This is a must-see, even if you're only visiting San Miguel for a scouting trip. Here, you will find a great number of art galleries, showrooms, artists from different disciplines, and all kinds of unique items. Getting around in San Miguel should be no problem at all since it's a small town and all neighborhoods are really well connected. Basically, the best mean of transportation here is simply walking. Just have in mind that the terrain is very irregular. There's a lot of cobblestones, there are some steep streets and hills within the city, so probably not the best choice for people with mobility problems. If by fortune you don't have any of those problems with walking, then consider it your best option. Not only will it help you increase your health condition, but it will keep pollution at a lower rate. Also will help with the traffic. But still, sometimes you will find yourself having to go further distances. And in this case, you can really rely on public transportation. For example, taking a bus here is pretty easy. It's not a big city, so it's not difficult to get from one end to the other. A bus ride costs seven pesos, and you will rarely have to take more than but one bus to get to your destination. Now, in case you want to explore and maybe go to another city, or a nearby area, there is a bus station that offers long distance trips to a great number of cities and states. For example, you can go to Ciudad de Mexico or Mexico City for about 600 pesos. That's only 30 US dollars. The only thing it doesn't have is an airport in town, which a lot of people just take the very, very, very common shuttle either to Leon Airport or to Querétaro Airport. Owning a car will really be up to you in San Miguel de Allende. But as far as our recommendation goes, we don't really think it's necessary if you live in one of these neighborhoods. Now, what about medical services? By now, you must be picturing life in San Miguel, and it is not hard to imagine that the city offers first-class healthcare. For small issues and routine checkups, you can visit several pharmacies that offer consultation services or consultorios, like farmacias similares where there's a doctor on site prepared to give you a checkup and even prescribe some medications if you need them. The checkup is only 50 pesos, that's $2.50. You can also get some basic lab work here for a few hundred pesos, or if you need something more specific, you can try one of the famous Laboratorios El Chopo, which is a medical laboratory with branches all over Mexico. For emergencies or special treatment to something more serious, there are two big private hospitals, one would be Hospital MAC, or MAC, which offers a great number of specialties and a lot of rooms for hospitalization. And the other one would be Hospital La Joya, also offering specialty surgeons and really great service. Now it's time for nightlife in San Miguel. San Miguel is well known for offering a vibrant and eclectic nightlife. There's not, never a dull day here. You can find a great number of rooftop bars scattered all over town all with a different vibe and concept. There are wine bars where you can have a taste of locally produced wines, restaurants owned by internationally recognized chefs, and terraces with live music. This is a really great place if you enjoy partying with friends or if you look for a nice and quiet dinner with a great wine. Now, if you're on a tighter budget or maybe you want to get more of an authentic Mexican experience, there are a variety of sports bars or cantinas which are aimed at a more casual experience. So as you can see, when it comes to entertainment and leisure, San Miguel has it all for people of all ages and tastes. Whether you want to have the perfect date by going to an arts exposition in the afternoon and top it off with a nice dinner and a glass of wine, or if you're just one of those that just wants to go for some beers and end up dancing on a rooftop in Centro, then San Miguel will be the perfect place for you. If you're not into bars, rooftop patios, or restaurants, there's so much more to do in San Miguel. In fact, if you didn't know this, San Miguel de Allende was included in the list of World Heritage Sites by UNESCO in 2008. This should give you an idea of how charming the city is. You could basically just walk around and that could be entertaining in, in its own. The whole town is filled with several museums, art galleries, which are constantly offering all kinds of events from expos to performances. So it's pretty easy to stay culturally active here. 
Beyond all the artistic and nightlife activities, there's so much more to do in San Miguel. For example, if you want to treat yourself, you can check out the many thermal bath spas that are on the road to Atotonilco, which is a little town just about 20 minutes from San Miguel, where there's a famous sanctuary dated from colonial times. If you're up to do some outdoor activities and hiking, you can go to the natural reserve of Cañada de la Virgen. This is a massive piece of land where the highlight is visiting the archaeological site where there's a pyramid and other ancient buildings dating back to the pre-colonial area. But that's not the only thing that you can do here. You can also do horseback riding, hiking, camping, and more. Or if you like being around nature but in a more relaxed environment, maybe you just want to sit in a quiet place and read. Then you should visit the botanical garden called El Charco del Ingenio which is inside the town just about 15 minutes from Centro. This place has a great diversity of species of plants and trees, and even a small lake that works as a dam too. It's a really nice and calm place to walk around and just relax. And probably one of the main questions we get about living in San Miguel de Allende, or in Mexico for that matter, is safety. Now recently, there's been a lot of negative news surrounding the state of Guanajuato, and you've probably come across some of these headlines. So in order to give you some peace of mind, I do want to say that when it comes to living in San Miguel de Allende, you don't have anything to worry about. In fact, there's been some rising violence in the state, however, it doesn't mean that the whole state is sunk in this situation. This rising violence, which is a product of rivalries between cartels and gangs, has been present mostly in secluded villages or in small towns where you really don't find yourself or really have any reason to visit. When it comes to big cities like Leon, Guanajuato, San Miguel, the sense of security is really optimal and you won't find yourself in the middle of an unfortunate situation. Here in San Miguel, you can always see local police patrolling and keeping the peace. And depending on the area that you live in, neighbors organize themselves as an association that hires private security and is always patrolling the streets. So don't let the media interfere with your decision-making process. San Miguel is perfectly safe and it will continue that way. Otherwise, we wouldn't recommend you to live here. Now, sadly, we have reached the end of this video, but I do hope that you have liked it and that you have found it super helpful. I'm pretty sure that you're excited about your new life in San Miguel, and rightly so. As you watch, living in this beautiful old Mexican town is a great experience all the steps of the way. You have really nice weather, a beautiful urban and natural landscape, lots of options for shopping, entertainment, dining out. You will be living in one of the trendiest towns in the world. There's a big international and artistic community that I'm sure you'll find a place in. I mean, you really have everything in San Miguel. You really just can't ask for more. But I would love to hear from you. Tell me what you think of San Miguel de Allende. Leave your honest thoughts in the comments. And remember, if you still have a few questions or want to check out some other cities in Mexico, subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos. That way you can have a better idea of what to actually expect living in Mexico. My name is Mariana. You just watched the Mexico Relocation Guide video and we'll see you in our next video. Nos vemos muy pronto.